rock band is one of my favorite games to play with my partner. He's on drums, I'm on bass. But this instrument has a pretty glaring flaw that we're going to fix today. Hi there! My name's Jazzy, this is Stuff We Make, the show where we make stuff. Thank you so much to Jamie for having me on the channel, as this is a brand new program for Stuff We Play, and I'm so happy to, to be here. I'm out of breath. <laughs> You probably recognize me from the speedrun podcast that I do with Jamie, which is turning in Canada. Thank you very much. But today I'm actually showing my face on the channel for the first time, and I'm really excited, really nervous, as this is like some of my first real video content, so please bear with me. I am doing my best. <laughs> so what is the issue with this fine piece? Uh, the strum bar sucks. This is an upgraded strum bar. It is 3D printed, a custom printed circuit board, and all sorts of other cool stuff that you can insert into your own guitar with no soldering and almost no tools except for a screwdriver. At the end, I'll give you a little brief demo as to how much better it functions than the stock one. Why is this important? Why is it so crucial that we get the old, mushy, crappy strum bar out of this guitar just to play a music game that hasn't been relevant in too long. Don't don't talk to me about them. Simply because Rock Band is a huge source of nostalgia for me. I played them as they were coming out in the mid 2000s. Dropped off a little bit in high school in like the 2010s and everything. And that's also when guitar-based music games started going downhill. But it turned me on to so much new music. I made so many friends with it. And now being able to share that experience with my partner is really, really meaningful to me. So being able to have an optimal experience now that I have some like tinkering and maker experience under my belt to make it even better, sounds fantastic to me. This is my kitty, she wanted to join the shot. Hello, you don't like being up here now that you're up here, but you were yelling for me. Yes, you were, yes, you were. So thankfully I don't have a giant back catalog of downloadable content to go through. Oh. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Let me give you an example in about like one second of how the strum bar, the old one specifically, is so like. My Starbucks is here. Why is this mod so important? Here's the original strum bar. It's made out of nothing. It's literally made out of nothing. It is so unresponsive and so mushy and like honestly as someone who's diagnosed with OCD it's actually a little bit triggering how unsatisfying and unclicky it is I'll be real um so we are happily good that that fell naturally that wasn't scripted so we are going to be ridding ourselves of this ultra bar and adding in a independent maker created unit that not only supports the maker community but also is going to feel so much better let me take you to the bench. This is our guitar controller and this is the inside. The mechanics behind it are super duper simple. There's a PCB that reads the input from the 10 frets, the two contacts from the strum bar, a tilt sensor, and other miscellaneous buttons, as well as a Bluetooth module to communicate with our console's dongle. What we're going to do today is install a replacement strum bar unit and attach it to the main PCB in place of the original. The best part, this is a fan-made mod that requires no soldering. So even if you don't own a soldering iron or a soldering gun, you can still support small business within the maker community. I'll have links in the description. Then, once it's installed, we're going to get it connected to the game and test it out. But before we go on, let me tell you about a company that can help you make your own mod projects from scratch. Our sponsor today is PCBWay, and they are the fastest and my personal favorite way to design and print your own circuit boards and have them sent to your home all for a fair, affordable price. You can use them to make mod kits of your own to sell, just like this one, commission some CNC routing, I mean, heck, you can even do 3D printing through PCBWay with FDM, SLA, and other popular methods. Manufacturing your own components for projects can require some pretty serious hardware, some of which may not be practical for your living situation. So let PCBWay take care of the heavy lifting for you. Check out the link in the description to support this show and our channel. And once again, a huge thank you to PCBWay for the sponsorship. With all that being said, let's get to work. A beautiful sunny day in Cleveland, Ohio. What a great day to make stuff. 
So this is my first real video, so please excuse some of the camera shoddiness. I started out by unboxing the meticulously packed guitar I scored on eBay for 25 bucks. I already had a wireless dongle, which is required to play the game and is more expensive, just like the disc that's more expensive than the GameCube Game Boy Player. And after that, it was time to start disassembling. This unit has never been opened before as evidenced by the factory tight screw clicks. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, that was a good one. If your unit is like mine, be careful not to strip these screws as they're made of really cheap material and they will strip easily. Here we can see where one camera died and I had to resort to using my backup footage that I was filming. Again, I do apologize for the graininess. This is my first real video, as I said. Inside, we find the guts that we talked about earlier. We started by unscrewing in these locations, snipping the wires off of the old Strumbar assembly. Be sure to keep track of which wires correspond to up and down, you will thank me. Then I dropped a new unit in, taking note of the arrow pointing in the direction we are supposed to slot this in. Then we strip back the original wires, give them a good twist, screw them gently down into place as you would with speaker wire for a hi-fi system. After giving the unit a primary feel test and listen test, I closed it back up, gave it some fresh batteries, and got it ready for testing. All right, now that that's all done, I'm ready to take this down to the TV, uh, get it all set up, hooked up to my PlayStation, and we'll see how well it does. Now, it's important to remember um, that playing Rock Band or any rhythm game at all on an HGTV is going to be a little bit of a lesson in futility. Uh, <laughs> just because of the input lag introduced by just the digital signal trying to do the thing. We don't have time to get into like the science behind it, but case in point, uh, just be sure to spend a little extra time and really hone in your latency settings. It is very important to be able to like play the game and hit the notes and everything. So this is a first generation controller and that's important because later iterations that have a rosewood quote, quote fretboard have a built-in detector, uh, like a little microphone that helps you calibrate the lag almost perfectly every time. This is the Maple fretboard version, so you have to do it manually because this came out in a time where, you know, CRT TVs were still an absolute norm in the Western world. So it is, uh, just spend some time, you will thank me. It is not the Strumbar's fault, it is the game's fault. So let's go calibrate it, and then let's go play a song, see how it works. I played through some songs on hard difficulty since I'm still very, very rusty and haven't played in years. I can honestly say that any errors made were on my part and not the guitars. Overall, I was super impressed with how good this strum bar felt. This is a huge marked improvement over the stock assembly and I cannot recommend this enough. If you wanna get your own mod for your own controller, you can check it out at Vidarts. We are not sponsored by them. I just really love them and want to support the maker community. It's about 30 bucks shipped, depending on where you live and everything. And it is, if you're, you know, if you're a fan of the game, this is by far one of the best investments you can make into your experience. With all that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for joining me in this first episode of my new series. It was so much fun putting all this together. It's been like a couple, months in the making and I moved house in the middle of it and it was you know a lot but we got there so thank you so much to Jamie for helping me to make this happen uh thank you to the stuff we play community for welcoming me so warmly uh I had a lot of fun putting this together I cannot wait to bring you more cool stuff right now I have two more videos three actually <laughs> three more videos in the pipeline that I cannot wait to show you one is like 3D printers, one stuff you can do with a smartphone to make it more like gamery as it were, a Warhammer related one, all sorts of cool stuff. So that being said, I've been Jazzy. This has been Stuff We Make on the Stuff We Play channel. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you next time.